Okay. So the general situation I'm going to imagine is the following one. I'm going to imagine I have some source here. So this is, doesn't matter what it is, but it's emitting a light signal with a characteristic frequency. Okay. It could be a laser, it could, as we said, be eclipses of Io around Jupiter, it could be the signal from the rocket like this. Okay. But it's emitting light signals with a characteristic frequency. Okay. We assume that this source is moving, so I'm going to consider it in the rest frame of the receiver. So I assume the source is moving with some speed v in this direction. I'm going to assume my observer is somewhere down here. So this is my observer I'll call S. So we're considering this problem in his rest frame, okay? in the frame in which he is stationary. So, what happens? So, the source sends out a signal, let's say here, so this is at time t equals zero, the source will send out a signal. Okay, so the signal will come out and will reach the observer. Okay, um, and let's say that the distance here is d. Distance from the source to the observer is d, and I'm going to assume that the angle here between the velocity of the source and the direction of the observer is theta. So theta equals zero means the source is coming straight at you. Theta equals 90 means it's perpendicular. Theta is 180 means it's going away from you. Measured in degrees. Okay. okay. So you've got a light source which emits signals with characteristic frequency nu. Okay, so nu is the characteristic frequency of the light source and this is in its rest frame. So in the frame in which it's stationary, it has a frequency nu. Okay. So the first thing is, in the frame in which it's moving, this nu will become slower, okay, because of the time dilation effect. Um, so you can see this if, if you look on the diagram again here. They're meant to send the signal once every year, but because the rocket is moving, he actually sends a signal once every one and two-thirds of a year, right? So he sends a signal le less often because he's moving because of time dilation, right? So that's the first thing we need to take note of. So if the light source is moving, then the time dilation effect implies that the frequency becomes becomes nu divided by gamma. Okay? Because it's the frequency is reduced, it's reduced by the factor of gamma. Gamma is always bigger than one, right? Okay, so now the first signal is here. Okay. After a certain amount of time, the second signal is emitted. Okay. So the second signal is emitted somewhere here. Okay. Same source, it's still moving. Okay. And the time at which the second signal is emitted is equal to 1 over the frequency period is 1 over the frequency, times the gamma factor, because of the time dilation effect. Right? So, as I mentioned there, so it's 1 over the frequency times the gamma factor. Okay? 
And again, the second signal comes down and reaches the observer here. Okay? And what we're interested is the frequency, what we're interested in is the frequency of signals received by this observer. So you can see there's going to be two effects that make a difference. The first one is the time dilation effect here, right, which we've taken account of. The second one is because the source is moving, he is now closer to the observer than he was before. Right? Because the source is moving, he is, well, as I've drawn it here, he has moved closer. So therefore, the light has less distance to travel. Right? And, okay, so the, the distance which he has to travel less, I can call delta D on this diagram here. Okay, so delta D is the perpendicular distance the source has moved closer to the observer in the time the second signal is emitted. Okay, right, so that's enough information to, to calculate the frequency of signals measured by the observer. So let's do that. So the first signal reaches the observer at time T1. Okay, this is dead easy, right? The distance is D, speed of light is always C, so the time is D over C for the first signal, right? The second signal is a bit trickier, but not much. Second signal reaches the observer. Time T2. Okay, so that's right equation for T2. So the first thing is the signal is emitted at time gamma over nu later. Okay, and then it has to travel the distance d minus delta d over c. Right? This is the time at which the signal is emitted. This is the distance it has to travel, which is speed of light here. Okay. So therefore, the apparent, the, the period measured by the observer is T2 minus T1, which is, okay, so the D over C parts cancel, so this is equal to gamma over nu minus delta D over C. Okay, now in the most general situation that I've drawn it there, that's all we can say. Okay, that's, that's as far as we can go. I can make it simpler by assuming that the source is far away from the observer. Okay? So we can get a simpler formula by assuming the source is far away. What that means is that the distance here that the source travels in one period is much less than the total distance. Okay. So to go, any, to go a bit further, we're going to assume that the source is far from the observer. Okay. So as I said, what this means is that the distance the source travels, which is uh, its speed v times the time, which is gamma over nu, that distance is going to be much, much less than the distance to the observer. That's the assumption we make. This is the distance that the source travels in one signal, in the time one signal is emitted, right? And that's much less than the distance to the observer. Right. So, in this case, we can assume that the angle theta does not change much. Right? If you look at that picture and you imagine this, the observer being very far away, the, the two lines will be nearly parallel. Okay? So, if I draw it here, it looks like this. So, this is the first position of the source. This is the second position of the source. And the observer is miles and miles and miles away. Okay? So in this case, 
the two lines here are basically parallel. Right? The observer is so far away down here. Okay? And in this case, then, the, the circle here is basically just going to be a right angle. Right angle. Okay? And we know that this angle here is theta. Okay? So now, this gives us a right angle triangle. So I'll draw it again bigger to make it clearer. So you've got a right angle triangle, this angle is theta, this distance is the distance the source moves, which is that, okay? And this distance here is what we called delta D, right? The, the distance that the source has got closer to the observer, okay? So that's a nice triangle, and then we therefore get that delta D is approximately equal to V times gamma over nu times the cosine of the angle theta it's from this triangle here. Okay. Then if we put that formula in here, we can get a bit, bit further. Okay, so in this case we get that T2 minus T1 is equal to gamma over nu minus V gamma over nu times C cos theta. Okay, just putting this formula into that one for delta D. So this is equal to gamma over nu times 1 minus V over C cos theta. And then, okay, I'll write down here. Just then we can put everything on. So this is the period measured by the observer between signals. The frequency is just 1 over the, the period, right? So therefore, the apparent frequency, the observed frequency, so I'll call this one new prime, that's the frequency measured by the observer. This is equal to 1 over the period he measures, which is T2 minus T1, which is equal to 1 over this, so that's new divided by gamma times 1 minus V over C cosine theta. And that's our final result. Okay? This is the frequency of the source, speed of the source, angle between the source direction and the observer, and this is the frequency measured by the observer. So that's our formula for the Doppler effect. So we'll talk a bit more about the Doppler effect next time. Um, what I just want to do to finish the class today is just check that this formula gives us the results we measured here, right? So if I put in the data moving away, I should get one signal every three years, and then moving towards, I should get one signal every third of a year. So I just want to check that that formula agrees with what we've got here, okay? So this is the, um, the rocket example. So in the rocket example, the frequency is one signal per year. The speed v is 0.8 times c, okay? and we've already shown that this means that gamma is equal to 5 thirds. Okay? When it's moving towards, oh sorry, let's do moving away first. So that's the best one. So when you're moving away from the Earth, that means as I've drawn the diagram here, theta is 180 degrees. Okay, so let's use radians, so theta is equal to pi radians, okay? which means that cos of theta is minus 1. Okay? So therefore, we get that the observed frequency from the formula over there is, one, is the measured frequency, which is 1, sorry, the, the frequency of the source, which is 1, 
divided by the gamma factor, which is 5 thirds, times 1 minus V over C, which is 0 0.8, times cos theta, which is minus 1, so that becomes plus. Okay. So this is 1, okay, this is 3 over 5 times 1.8. Right? 5 times 1.8 is 9, so this is 1 third. Okay? So that's a third of a signal per year. So a third of a signal per year means one signal every three years, right? which is what we, what we found when we did the example. So that's the right answer. That's good. And the secondly, moving towards... So if it's moving towards, then the angle theta is zero. So cos theta is one. So then again, by the same token, the frequency new prime is one over five thirds, one minus 0 0.8. So this is three divided by five times 0 0.2, which is three signals per year. Okay, which again is what we found. So when you're moving towards, the signals get three times faster. Okay, um, so we've checked that our general formula for the Doppler effect works in this example. Um, in the next class, I'm going to talk a bit more about the Doppler effect. And in particular, um, this factor gamma here. So this factor gamma here is from the time dilation of the source. Because the source is moving, it's emitting more slowly. Okay? So this gives you a second way that you can test the time dilation experimentally. Okay. You take a source which is moving and you see if this factor gamma appears or not. Okay. So there was an experiment called the ives stillwall experiment, formed in the 50s, I think, which did exactly that. So they measured time dilation by using this um, Doppler shift formula. So I'll talk about that next time. Okay.